All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening um, in this month's installment of the Treehouse uh, Artist Lecture Series or Conversation um, here on Zoom. So this month in the shop, we're featuring the work of Lisa Cho, um, showing photos from the Honolulu Classical Ballet. Um, and Lisa's joining us here today with uh, Romy Beppu, who's uh, joining us from the ballet in support. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn things over to Lisa and Romy. Thank you, Drew. You're welcome. Hi, Mom and Uncle Dennis. You might want to turn your camera <laughs> off or no, leave it on, leave it on. I changed Hi. my mind. <laughs> leave it on. Good to see you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, this project has been um, encompassed nearly three years and has been an incredibly rewarding project. Um, my thanks go, huge thanks goes to Romy and Honolulu Classical Ballet, all the dancers, all the families, um, everyone who's, who is a part of that, all the teachers. Uh, it's a really wonderful uh, program, um, very much about celebrating the art of ballet and celebrating the artist. So kudos to everybody there. Um, can, can you see my screen, Drew? Awesome, thank you. Uh, Drew has kindly passed the uh, stewardship of this Zoom to me. It's a lot of trust, <laughs> Drew. <laughs> uh, so Ballet on Film is a project that actually began to capture uh, classical ballet in Hawaii. Um, but as the pandemic hit, it really uh, changed into following the school and how it was innovating and adapting to the times to, like I said earlier, celebrate art and its artists. So that's really what the project has become about. It's a more, much more intimate story. And I think it's actually a much better story because it's about what we're all living through and going through. You know, it's not only ballet, but it's every other type of, um, every other type of art, every other type of industry every human on this earth is affected by what's going on. Um, <laughs> I love being the host. Hi, Auntie Carol, I can <laughs> see you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope you can hear me okay. <laughs> we can hear you fine, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is gonna be an excellent Zoom, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, We're here to support you. yes, we so. I'm going to cycle through, um, there's various chapters for this project. So I'm going to cycle through a chapter and then Romy and I will discuss a few photos here and there. Um, and then we're also going to have a Q&A at the end, which so we hope to wrap up our presentation by about 645. And then we will be having a live Q&A. So please bring your questions about photography, about ballet, about life, anything. Okay, so this first photo um, titled Girls Backstage, this was actually taken when I first uh, shot with Honolulu Classical Ballet. This was in the winter of 2019. And this was taken at Mamiya Theater where they're do doing a performance of a Nutcracker Suite. Um, I love this photo. Uh, the film that I shoot on is Kodak Portrait 800. And that film is, no that line of film is really known to skew a little bit more yellow. And if you're, if you're like me and you have to shoot indoors, you're shooting, you have to do something where you push the film, which means you have to shoot it at a higher sensitivity. So because we're indoors and there's usually less light, especially on the stage where it's much darker in the wings, I need the film to have uh, be more sensitive to light. So when you're doing that as well, the film also tends to skew even more yellow. So for the most part with all the photos you'll see, I actually adjusted, I, I do a lot of, um, color correction for some of them. And I specifically actually take out the yellow, but for this one, I left more of it in. Uh, not only did it, uh, was their wardrobe and their dress for that day of a yellow color, but I think it really represented to me the feeling I got from that first experience with Honolulu Classical Ballet, with these dancers in particular. It was such a warm, welcoming, friendly feeling. I had so much fun that day. Mm -hmm. um, these girls were just hanging out backstage, just girls being girls. And I just asked them if I could kind of like, you know, hang out with them and shoot, you know, what they were talking about. And they were so wonderful and they just kept talking and I kind of just revolved around them with my camera, which is what I like to do with subjects. 
find a subject and I kind of just revolve around them and I change my angle. So I get taller, you know, I like to climb up on things. Romy has definitely yeah. seen me climb up on things. Um, I've told her many times, I love being up a ladder. As uh, long as we don't fall down. Yes, a ladder. <laughs> as long as we don't fall down. Um, so, you know, I'll get taller, I'll get shorter. Um, I like to revolve around them literally like a moon to a planet. And yeah, I love this photo and it really represents a lot of the warmth and just love that I, I feel about the school and that I feel like I've given to them and that they've definitely given to me. So um, that was the first time we shot together, 2019. This was also taken on that same day. This is Maddie uh, tying her shoe in the wings. We're gonna actually, heart, we're gonna come back to this photo a little bit later, but I love this shot, the mood. Um, you may notice that the focus is actually on her shoe. And I actually did that for me, if you're shooting a, like a woodworker, somebody whose profession is to make uh, furniture, their tools are like a hammer, you know, so it'd be close-ups of the hands. But, and for me, although ballet is very much a, it encompasses your entire body, you know, and it encompasses not only is it physical, but it's so, you have to be so mentally tough and emotionally strong um, that I wanted to focus, do some shots where it's more focused on their tool. In this case, to me, more so the shoes. So as you'll see, as we go through this, there are many close-ups of shoes in various environments. Um, so these are the, those are the shots from the first time. And now we move on to early 2020, which was the John Landowski tribute at Leeward Theater. This shot is from the flyer. This is Caroline and Maddie. Um, I love this photo. This is one of the few photos that I have actually in this project where I feel like there is really a, I chose this for the flyer because I love that Caroline is looking at us while we look at her. So it's very much that immediate emotional connection that I love. And because so much of this project has taken place during the pandemic where, you know, the students are wearing, the students, the teachers, everyone involved, myself included, we're wearing a mask to keep everyone safe. Um, it has been a bit of a challenge, you know, emotionally. That's what photography and art is to me. It's about the emotional experience that you're taking the viewer on that you yourself have been on with your subjects. So that's actually the reason I chose this as the flyer. I wanted somebody to see it and have that immediate emotional connection. Um, yeah, I love this it's shot. It's striking. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really striking. It's, I remember when we were exchanging notes about it, you called it um, like vintage Vogue. I love that. Um, and then when I look at it more so too, I love painting. So I love Vermeer, I love Caravaggio, I love um, all the old masters. So this really to me was very much like girl with a pearl earring. You know, she's looking directly at you while you look at her. I love that. So the companion piece to this photo is Mirror Mirror, which also I feel is like one of our favorite photos. Yeah. Um, I remember taking this photo on that day. It was pretty fast to set up. We were, uh, it, was a, it was a performance that involved many, many ballet schools. So where our dressing room was, was um, like a theater. So the theater was completely black, not a light besides a few lights on the ceiling in sight. So I went on a hunt to find some mirrors because I knew specifically I wanted to do uh, some shots with them in the mirror. And I was so fortunate. This theater was so amazing. I believe it's a, a new theater that I found this locker room, which had a huge vanity um, with the lights. And then next to that, there was a huge wall with a huge mirror. So I positioned Maddie and Caroline in there and I just asked them to kind of be in a different position, um, kind of getting ready. I grabbed a chair, stood on the chair, asked another people in the school to move over. So everybody was so great. <laughs> Um, and we snapped the shot and I knew it from that moment when I took it, I told, I told the dancers, I was like, if this comes out, this is going to be one, one of the best shots ever. And I, I just feel incredibly lucky that it did come out. Um, we're also going to be talking about this one a little bit deeper. Um, the next shot I want to show you. So this is actually the raw scan. So I, once the film is shot, um, I get it developed by a lab like Treehouse has a really great lab. Um, so the film gets developed, I pick up the negatives and then I scan them myself at home. So I have a, a film scanner. And then from there I edit it, I color correct it, I you know, deal with the um, 
touch things up a lot. So uh, this is the raw scan. And as you'll notice on this scan, notice all the things around the mirror. There are light switches. There are on the right, there's a Glade plugin by the light. So now I wanna just show a side by side to show the final version and the uh, scan. Yeah. So you can just kind of see, um, this is my personal style of photography. I like things to look clean and really focus the, the viewer's attention in specific ways. So to me, I do edit out distracting things sometimes. And this is a good example of a photo where I thought that that would be, to me, the photo is much more powerful to have all those things removed that kind of just take your, um, where your glance might go. You know, I want the glance to be on the girls in the mirror. So it's a completely different, right? completely right. different vibe, black and white, you know, you can, you can see that. I agree. Even if you look on the big mirror that they're reflected in, there's the, like the countertop and there's like a deep maroon color that's below them. And if you look on the raw uh, scan, you'll see that there's just kind of some blemishes, you know, in white and there's like a little like outlet cover. But then if you look in the final, you know, I, I took all that out and I, I really think it makes a huge difference. So I would just encourage anybody that is into, really into photography to really take the post-processing, the editing, um, not just the shooting, uh, really important, but to me, a huge part of my work is what happens in post. And I have talked to Romy's ear off about that many times. <laughs> I understand it. See, it's, a, it's the same in the art form of ballet. It's, you know, all the, the fine details in getting to your final product. So take care of those details. <laughs> <laughs> this next shot is also from the same 20, early 2020 show. Um, this is another shot that I believe, you know, we both really love. And this is actually a good example of kind of the beauty of, of film. So on the day, the actual lighting for this photo is it's blue and yellow. Um, but as you can see here, it's a bold, fiery red. And that's because, um, again, after I got the film developed and I scanned it in myself, before I color corrected it, I saw it as this bold, beautiful, deep red. And I thought, we must keep that. <laughs> so then I, um, you know, just kind of touched it up a little bit, removed some of the lights at, at the top of the, the image that were kind of distracting and just didn't add to it. And um, there you go. This image too, I think is a good example of, I love new environments. No matter where it is, I think that any place has its own beauty. Mm -hmm. um, as you'll see also, as we go deeper in here, we've, uh, Romy has arranged these really unique experiences for the school and we've shot in very, very different, unusual <laughs> um, locations for the ballet that the ballet has never been before, you know? And to me, no matter where we are, I always feel that I can find beauty in that space. Every environment has its own unique personality and charm, and it adds so much. Um, so a grand theater like this, um, when, I, when I would be moving along the wings, this is during rehearsal, I would see the ropes that just cascaded from the ceiling as like this beautiful waterfall. And I, I just marveled at it, you know? And, I, I don't have the experience that Romy does being in, you know, theaters like around the world, but to me, this theater was so different than some of the other ones I'd been in. So I wanted to capture how grand I felt being on the, the side of the stage. So I just waited um, also for, I love the people that are on the bottom left of this shot. So as I mentioned earlier, this 2020 show involved many different ballet schools. So there were just so many dancers everywhere. And I think it really added a lot to this shot that the wings, they feel so full. It was like this really great energy, you know? Yeah. Can I just add something yeah. really quick to this? Um, so what I really like about this is as performing artists in my field and what we do, we focus on what's going on on the stage, right? And what was really cool about this, this photo was exactly what Lisa was talking about. It's her photographer's eye and look at the ropes, look at the, the lights, look at the, you know, the things in the back, which add to it. So this shot kind of combines those two different forms, two different art forms. Um, and you just stop when you see this photo. 
you know, you see this grand, um, grand theater and you see the lights and the, this tiny dancer, right? So the perspective on this is great. This became our um, 10 year anniversary uh, key image as well, because I thought this was, wow, such a powerful shot. So thank you. We like this photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, next, this is actually the final shot that I have from this show. Um, but I love this photo. I mean, it's got a real rehearsal feel to it. So the first line um, closest to the right, that's Romy and then the rest of the teachers from the different schools that were there. And as you notice, they're leading this rehearsal. So their hands get closer to the correct um, vertical position. And then as we go back further in the line, more to the left, you know, you see the rest of the, the students, they're kind of like their hands are raising to meet them. I just love the mood of this, the, the more of the pastel colors to also balance out, you know, like that bold red one that we saw or the very like architectural shots, like the mirror mirror photo that um, I spent so much time speaking about. Yeah, I just love this shot. So from there in, as we all know, 2020, uh, early 2020, the pandemic hit and uh, life definitely changed. So from that point on, uh, Honolulu Classical Ballet started having their classes via Zoom. Um, In-studio classes were not happening at that point. So um, I love this shot. Uh, the shot is titled Empty, and this is Aya. Miss Aya. Miss Aya. I just love this shot because not only does, you know, the, the big smile on her face, it shows, I think, the attention and care that the teachers poured into doing the classes virtually and trying to still make it a very engaging um, experience for the students. So they would, um, it's, being in the pandemic as we still are in it, it's not an easy time. And I really felt going into the studio, like I felt how much effort they poured into making this a good experience for the kids. So I love it because it shows, you know, her enthusiasm, her genuine enthusiasm on her face. But I also love the fact that it shows like the studio is empty. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting uh, shot. Um, same day, uh, Aya, I call this Aya Arabesque um, because that's the um, position that she's- Second Arabesque. Of course, <laughs> Aya Second Arabesque, you guys heard it here. I shall change the name, but I just love this shot. And <clears throat> there's another photo coming up of Aya next, but I think these, this series too from the virtual classes the teachers bring so much to um, the teachers bring so much to the photos. Um, everyone does. The dancers, again, the families are a huge part of it. Even though I don't have many photos of specifically families, they are a huge part of this project. To me, these virtual class shots, I love that it shows the style, not only the high level of instruction and the love and care that the teachers bring, but frankly, like the great style. As you'll see, like I love, you know, what I would wear and she would always have this jewelry on and it just added so much. So you'll see that in the next shot. In this shot, I she's, uh, it's Aya met, showing the kids that the kids are gonna have their parents take a video or a photo while she's looking at a bunch of photos. So it was like inception times three, you know? And I also, again, I just love her style. Romy is as well, the other teachers, Amanda and Miss Amanda, Miss Ayami. Everybody brings their own unique style and it really adds to the work. Um, I love, so I guess I should stop saying I love that photo. She sounds <laughs> arrogant. Uh, <laughs> I, what I enjoy about photography and especially long-term projects, I like the relationships and I like getting to know the subjects and that we have a connection. So when I would go into the virtual, when I'd go into the studio to, to watch Romy and Aya, I like just observing people, you know, like I noticed so many things about Aya, I noticed so many things about Romy that are really beautiful. So literally Aya, the laptop would be on a stool and Aya and Romy, they bend down to be at eye level with the laptop so they can look at the dancers at home practicing and then give them notes. So I would always notice that and I just waited for her to do that with, and I love what she's wearing. It's very like Audrey Hepburn, you know, with the, the black and right. all that stuff. The last thing I want to mention about this chapter, the virtual classes, is that it's in black and white for a reason. To me, although we were all trying our best to make this seem like, you know, to make the best experience for all of us, not only the dancers, it just kind of felt like life was not in color, you know? 
So that's really why too, that this, this chapter is in black and white because that's really how I felt, you know? So now we come to one of the best uh, days in this project for me personally. This was 2020, I think it may have been summer or late spring mm -hmm. where, where Romy organized, um, but the school organized an outdoor class. And this was the first time many of the students had seen each other in months. Or the older kids. Or the, or the older kids, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was like a, it was an incredibly special day. Um, this is one of the few chapters, um, like the virtual classes that I shot on 35, 35 millimeter. So most of the rest of this project was shot on medium format, 120 film. And many of you, I know many people in this uh, Zoom talk have seen my, uh, the vintage camera that I use the most, which is a Yashica 635 and used to belong to uh, Floyd and Malcolm who are in this Zoom, two of my mentors. Floyd actually used this camera in the late 60s, I believe, and then sold it to Malcolm. And at, at that point, Floyd uh, brokered the deal for me to buy it from, from Malcolm. And ever since then, I've been in love with this camera. And it's what I use the most for my film work. Um, occasionally I do use 35, which is a wonderful format. And thank God, frankly, I brought it on this day. This class was one hour long. And uh, for people that shoot film, medium format, for me, I, that's only 12 shots on a roll. So I would have burned through that pretty fast for this hour long day. And I would have had to waste time changing film. But thank God I brought the 35 and I just you know, used up one roll. So it was very fortunate that I, I brought that camera that day. Um, so this is one of my favorite shots. I love the crack in the uh, court. The crack, the, in the, court. Yes, yep. the, cra the crack in the court and the sand. I just thought that adds like, a lot of character to the photo. Um, here's a shot of Romy, Tiff, Sarah, Leah's behind you. Um, I love the fact that we can tell it's Hawaii. You know, it feels like Hawaii to me. I see the, the bushes and, and the trees. So this is at Wailaiki Park. Um, this is one of, so this shot I've titled Joy with an exclamation <laughs> point. I titled it Joy um, because this really encompassed the feel, definitely the feeling that I had that day. Um, my heart was so full that day. And, and I feel like I really felt that energy from the rest of the, the people that were there. So that's why I titled that Joy. Uh, <laughs> Leah, Leah's toe peeking out. Um, love this shot. Uh, Maddie, uh, Maddie slipping on her shoe, taking off her tennis shoe, slipping on her ballet shoe. Uh, Tiff with her blue smurf like colored socks, um, putting on her point shoes. So can I just interject yes. here real quick? Um, the reason why she probably has blue socks is because she had her sneakers on before. And, and I asked the girls to bring their sneakers because we were on the tennis courts and it might not be the, the safest thing to jump in our regular flat shoes. And that's why you see us all in sneakers, but it was a way to get uh, the girls, how, how can we get them together? You know, how can we do this safely? So it was outdoors and this is what we did. So there you go. And yes, she's putting on her point shoes now. Point shoes. Yep. Yep. Um, so this, I, what I love too, is that when I took that photo of Maddie, I knew that it connected to the previous photo from 2019 when I first shot with them. And I thought it was a very interesting, um, it's so interesting to see them next to each other because it really shows how life has changed. You know, once COVID hit and um, performance, not performances, but uh, just having class indoors was not happening, you know? So the fact that I have two shots that really show how life changed, I love that. So after this, we actually did get ready to come back into studio. Uh, so this shot shows Miss Romy and Miss Aya measuring the studio. Um, and soon after that, we were back in studio. This shot is titled Before Class. Um, I guess I don't really have the words to describe how this photo makes me feel, but I am naturally, I think, attracted to architecture. Mm -hmm. So when I go into a space, I just can't help it, but I always notice, just always notice the architecture, you know, just interesting things, uh, again, about the personality and charm that any new environment brings. And this was definitely something I noticed uh, when we first went to, 
when we first entered the studio again. Um, and I remember I asked Romy, I sent her a couple of iPhone photos that I took and I told her, I was like, I wanna do a shot with the girls. And I think the next time I visited with them, I didn't want it to be staged. The best is when it's their authentic emotion. So I kind of just had them gather. And then at my one of my tricks is that I'll be like, I'm just checking my settings. And they're just hanging out, right? And then I just take it. So that has been some of the uh, some of the methods of uh, if you want to work with people and get some of the best shots, you tell them I'm just messing with the settings and you just take it. <laughs> well, it's and it's also, um, you know, you have the most shots here of the older girls. And it's also because you, you know, over time too, you had that relationship with them. So they felt, they also felt comfortable just being themselves. You know, it's like, oh, Lisa's here again with your camera. So it's not a big deal, but that I think, you know, you caught that. That is true. Um, these, there. these girls, I all met, um, these dancers, I, I all met on that first shoot and I've, I've known them ever since. And it's really wonderful to see them grow. Really wonderful. This next shot um, is titled Swan Lake. So at this, um, this was spring 2021. And I attended the most senior class, Ballet Technique 4, for I believe eight weeks. There was a class on Friday for an hour and I went every Friday for eight, eight weeks. Um, They're rehearsing Swan Lake for the upcoming performance. As Romy knows, I love shooting through things. So or um, using a mirror to reflect. So I'm constantly like trying to shoot through a doorway, through a window, using the mirrors to reflect back the actual image. I love that look. Um, so I specifically positioned myself outside of the door and just kind of waited. I also think what adds a lot to this photo, um, besides kind of the extra dimension of the fact that you're shooting through something, it's just the color. I think mm -hmm. the color of the studio it adds, there's like a, a thickness that I think it really adds to this shot, like a depth. Love this one. I guess a companion piece in a way. Um, I've titled this Broken Wing. Um, although Caroline did not break her arm, thank goodness, uh, she broke a finger. Just thought it was very, um, it was connected, you know, to Swan Lake and what we're working on. So I titled that one broken wing. And it's ironic because she's got a broken finger and thank goodness it wasn't a broken toe because as you can see, she's still able to do, <laughs> she's still able to dance on point. I also, and I don't mean this facetiously, I really learned being part of the school that ballet dancers are probably the strongest human beings on the planet. Because not only is it so physically taxing, um, there's so much strength and resilience that they have to bring physically. It's also so emotional and it's so such mental strength that they have to bring. So, you know, I've definitely mentioned that to her a few times that I'm, uh, ballet dancers are incredibly strong human beings and it's, I really marvel at what they do. The girls are extremely, extremely. absolutely. Um, so from this, we actually moved to our spring showcase, which took place at Holy Nativity Gym. So at this point, this was May of 2021, and uh, there were no theaters that were allowing performances inside. So Romy and the rest of the teachers in the school innovated, uh, innovated and adapted and got really creative, frankly, with finding a venue that we could rehearse at and have, a, have the students um, have a performance for, not only for the students, something for them to work towards, but also for the families. Um, and this is, this was on rehearsal. So in Holy Nativity Gym, there's a basketball court and there's also a stage. So this is the wood, this is the part of the stage and- um, Which we didn't end up using for a <laughs> performance, but they're using it as a bar. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I was, I, was, uh, I was wandering and rambling a little bit there. I'm like, what are they holding on to? Yeah. They're using it as their bar for their warm up. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. I love this shot and I'll tell you why. I love the shot because um, there's so much expression. As you can see, you can't see anyone's face, right? So the focus is on their back, their arms, and you see that energy. I do at least, right? I do, yeah. So I think that this is um, this is unique too, because the emotion is not coming directly from the face. It's so graceful. Um, I yeah, I just love this shot. Just the elegance and the 
grace and sophistication. And again, taking place in an environment that ballet is normally right. never performed in, you know? Um, and this gym, I remember growing up in this gym and playing volleyball. My mom would take me to <laughs> go practice volleyball there. And the, this gym in particular has a lot of character. We um, had birds flying in the ceiling. I got a awesome. photo of a pigeon just for, um, for my own memories. Uh, I got a pigeon. And then, <laughs> yeah, that didn't make it into the, the gallery, no. but for our own memories. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I had a really good, a good time there. This next shot is also from, again, Holy Nativity Gym, and um, this is called Mastering the Bow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at the emotion and the, um, how hard they are concentrating to make sure that they so are, they are uh, mastering the bow for Miss Aya and for the families. I mean, it's just... <laughs> The yeah. level of focus, yes. especially the little one, and she's just about to trip and fall. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I, but this photo, it's so dynamic, you know, and I and, uh, really like that about this shot. Um, yeah. Now we move to actually the next uh, performance, which was the um, winter of 2021, mm -hmm. um, December. And again, same thing, we ran into the issue of at that time, theaters were not allowing in, uh, in performances inside. So uh, Romy and I actually went to Scout Bishop Museum, I believe maybe a week or two after the spring performance and uh, we loved it. Um, they had this wonderful A-frame structure. Uh, not only I feel like did it work logistically for what we needed, uh, we wanted to perform outdoors. So there could be op an open air um, performance. It was safe. It, it was, was safe. safe for the performers and their families yes. you know, and the teachers. Where I'm, I guess I'm constantly like from my photography background, I'm constantly worried about weather, right? So I was like, great, we will have um, a covering. Uh, parking was right there. But then also too, the person that um, is I believe, maybe the head of events at Bishop Museum and she took us around on a tour. She just, she couldn't have been more wonderful. And I think that gave, that definitely gave me a really great sense of um, we're going to be taken care of very much a family of feeling. So also, you know, I think we were more inclined to. I think also, you know, the fact that this was about the kids it really was about not, you know, having them not lose an opportunity to perform due to COVID. So she was really, really instrumental and great with um, securing this uh, spot for us as well. Uh, this was also a, a shot from the um, winner, the 2021 winter performance. Um, I love the detail in the uh, outfits that they, every show, there's, um, there's like some different details with different classes and I, uh, that I'm drawn to. And I was definitely drawn to the deep blue um, in this class. And there was like, um, I'm not sure if it's sequins or, or whatnot, but there was like a little bit of like, I could, when I would watch them perform and I'd watch them walk, just the sun would like put these beautiful, it, would be, it, it had like an iridescent kind of quality. It was very like little reflections. It was really beautiful, like a, um, not bright, but kind of like a twinkle, twinkle star type of um, feeling that it gave me. It was really nice. So from Bishop Museum, um, thankfully 2022 has arrived and we just recently had the 10 year performance at uh, back in Mamiya Theater, in a theater, hallelujah. Um, so that was really, and with the first performance without masks on, so it was definitely something, and um, I just thought it was amazing. I mean, the, not only what everyone has just gone through to get to this point, but the fact that they put on such an amazing show, it was very minimal, both what they wore, um, the costumes, but also the backgrounds, as you'll see, this screen is just blue, most of the performances, the screen, it would just be one color. It might move between different colors. The set was very, very minimal and very clean. And I think that it was really about focusing on the art form of dance, um, the art from celebrating ballet, just for what it is. It doesn't need to be all like pomp and circumstance. You know, it was very much the beauty of the dance. So I personally really like this shot. Um, I think it shows to me it's very triumphant, you know, that we finally return to the stage, which is what this is titled. Uh, I also like that because of what she's dancing on, this Marley that's put on top of the stage, it kind of looks like she's dancing on like ice or something. Mm -hmm. It's got like a magical quality about it, you know? 
I also mentioned to Romy, it kind of reminds me of um, the, is it called like a jewelry box where you open up the jewelry mm -hmm. box and the ballet dancer um, pops up and, and kind of does a, a pirouette. Mm -hmm. Look at that, mm -hmm. ballet term. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt, I feel like it was really magical um, night for everyone involved. So this is really nice too. You see the reflection, right? On the, um, that front area as well. As we all reflect on what we've been through. <laughs> Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's that's ballet on film, and uh, it's been an incredibly rewarding project. And you know, I couldn't have done it without Romy and the rest of the the school. So everyone has been incredibly gracious and and wonderful. And it's just been great to get to know everybody. You know, like I said, I think photography for me is very much about you. Rarely do you do anything in life alone you you need help and you you want help from other people you want participation participation and you know i think that the relationships have been like a huge part to me about this project mm -hmm. so drew i shall turn the hosting i don't know how to turn the hosting back to you so i'm gonna <laughs> stop sharing my screen okay i'll i'll leave it with you for now just in case um anyone wants to go back to a specific image so, so you'll have the ability to pull that up but thank you so much for that presentation and um I'll say this is um, a project unlike any that we've we've had at, at Treehouse before. Um, really appreciate it. it. It feels like such a, such a pleasure to see something that's so comprehensive and so lived in. And I think that investment of time over several years. Um, and I also just want to note what an amazing visual record for these young dancers and their families to have. I'm, I'm Romy can probably speak to this. Um, something that for the, the teachers, the staff, the dancers, their families to be able to have, you know, this moment in their, their young lives captured, particularly, you know, a period where, um, you know, youth is fleeting. Um, these moments, the pandemic hopefully is something we won't have to live through again. It'll be a, a one-off in our lifetime. Um, so yeah, what, what a gift you've, you've given to these young people and their families. And thank you for sharing with, with all of us. Absolutely, I was just gonna say, um, I was thinking, you know, in this day and age, families um, can, you know, easily take photos of their kids um, with their iPhones, you know, we all can, but if you look at these photos, you know, each one is really, it's special. It's definitely a moment in time. Um, and yeah, it's her art, her passion. Um, and um, yeah, so we appreciate it. We appreciate you, Lisa. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a team effort, like I said before. <laughs> She's modest. We could go on telling each other how much we like each other, but we're trying to keep this Zoom to a reasonable time frame. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so um, we do have a question in the chat, which I think is from Bobby at Treehouse. Uh, so I'll, I'll read that out. But if if anyone else who's with us in the in the discussion has a question, feel free to type it into the chat, and and I can relay that to uh, Lisa and Romy. Or if you want to raise your hand um, or unmute yourself, feel, feel free to speak up as well. Um, but yeah, just to Romy's, or sorry, to Bobby's question for you, Lisa. Um, for people who are unfamiliar with the Yashica 635 that you shoot with, um, that twin lens reflex um, is a waist level viewfinder. So can you speak a little bit about um, composition using, using a waist level versus a, what most people are familiar with, an eye level viewfinder? how that affects your composition, um, what challenges that gives you. I know you talked a lot about changing your verticality um, and maybe also what kind of benefits come from using a camera like that. Thanks for the question, Bobby. And um, thank you to Bobby, Drew, and everybody at Treehouse for um, exhibiting the work. I mean, really a huge thank you. Um, interestingly enough, I actually, so I bring the Yashika up to my eye, so it is higher. Um, I can't, I'm definitely, not only have I possibly never taken a, a shot that's tack sharp, I know people, photography people love to use that term. I don't worry about that and I don't know if I've ever done that. Um, but I can tell you this, shots would be way blurrier if I had left it down here and tried to focus that way. So I actually bring it up to my eye and I use the, um, I think it's called a focusing screen. 
oh, Floyd is probably like cringing if I'm getting <laughs> this around. But I, I, I look at it here and I use it, I focus. Um, but because it's still a little bit lower than my eye, yeah, it's still lower than I would take, use a, a traditional type of like a 35. Um, and then frankly, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm vertically challenged. I'm a shorty. So I'm often climbing up onto things and yeah, um, just trying to make it, make it work. Um, did I answer his question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I, thank you for that. Um, I have another question that just popped up that's uh, just speak a little bit about what inspired you to, to start this project. Sure. Um, you know, like I mentioned about Romy and um, my style, I think being very, um, there's a thread that runs through our style. Ballet is very elegant and sophisticated, um, especially it's classical ballet, you know, not modern, but very, it's steeped in tradition. And I, I'm definitely an old soul. And I enjoy, the thing that I'm actually most inspired by are film. So cl classic films, modern films, um, foreign films. So to me, there's a lot, um, I'm very drawn to the 40s and the 50s and, and back in the day. So something like classical ballet, it really speaks to me because it's so street, steeped in tradition. Um, and it's also definitely, I would, perhaps vintage is the wrong word, but there's an old soul that runs throughout classical ballet that really connects to me and my work, you know? I mean, I use a camera that is from 1969. Like most of this project was shot on a camera that's over 50 years old. And that like blows people's mind, but you can you can still get amazing work out of out of any camera. Yeah, that um you know, that classical inspiration definitely comes through. Even I think when you were talking about some of your other references earlier, you were mentioning Caravaggio and, you know, looking back at um, classical painting from a European tradition. Um, there's a lot of love for you in the images in the chat. So check that out if you haven't already. But um, yeah, what, uh, so you mentioned that film is an inspiration for you. Is there a particular director or cinematographer, um, any specific references or, or favorites? We just opened up the chat, FYI. This is hilarious. <laughs> Albert, that shot is fire. fire. I don't know which one you're talking about, but I'm going to cool. take that to all of them. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, Drew. We could be on this Zoom forever for me to talk to you about film. Um, one of my favorites is Wong Kar Wai. In the Mood for Love is my absolute hands down favorite film um, and has really inspired me. That film is so beautiful and there are such, there's very minimal dialogue. And I find that films like that in particular really do speak to me because I don't feel that you need a lot of words. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Romy and I often talk about music as well. And there's so much that can be a st complete story can be told with visuals and music. You know, music really takes the viewer by the hand and leads them down the path of the emotions that they should be feeling. You know, so it's I'm really drawn to his work. Um, I recently I, I think I might just speak a little bit about things I've seen recently because that's just more in the front of my my mind. Just today. I rewatched Laura, which is a black and white film from 1944 that I was talking about Dupe about today. It's a film noir and it's, it's gorgeous. Um, not only the way they shot it in black and white, but just the editing. So again, I think it harks, it, it connects to how I feel about post-production, right? And telling a story that not only is it important how you're shooting a project, the story, the acting, the lighting, what you're capturing with your camera, but it's how you edit that together. Um, so a film like Laura, there's a lot that goes on and it's a lot of dialogue, but they edited it at such a pace, um, especially at a time I feel that back then there's a lot of um, great films that I love. I love Hitchcock. His films aren't necessarily fast paced at all, you know? And so for a film from the 1940s in black and white to be edited, I feel really, uh, it's really succinct. I appreciate that, um, you know? And if I might mention one more film, I really am not up to date most of the time with kind of like what's going on in pop culture at all. Um, so I hadn't heard about all the big buzz about Call Me By Your Name, 
which I think came out maybe four or five years ago. And I, Dupid mentioned it to me and then I had a seen something else on YouTube where they showed a couple of clips and I thought, gosh, that's totally up my alley. And I recently watched that and, and was incredibly moved. Not only do I feel that, <clears throat> not only did I feel like I was there, um, so this movie is shot on film. It takes place, I believe, in the 80s. It's a story about first love in Italy. Um, and it, so film naturally makes some, uh, to me, it makes a project very, has, a, has this, this warmth to it, you know, this soul. Um, but I felt both that when I watched it, I was there with them, but then I also felt like it was a memory. And I can't exactly put that into words, how it made me feel that way. But I think that's so great when you can watch something and it, and it elicits these emotions in you. And I, I thought, I thought, and I continue to think about that film since I've seen it. I maybe saw it two weeks ago and I still, it's just at the front of my mind because I was so moved by, by what they did, you know? And like, I know Timothy Chalamet, Timothy, right? Timothy. Yeah, Timothy yeah. Chalamet is like all the rage right now. I didn't know anything really about him but honestly I can see what the big deal is now because he was amazing in that I mean everybody was but I can really see um I can really see why people are very high on him and also the music the music that they used um was so moving so yes awesome yeah thanks for that answer for indulging the question um and yeah, the first one you mentioned, Wong Kar Wai, is one that, that definitely came to mind seeing, especially some of your shots on stage with the different lighting. Um, so we do, Albert has had his hand up, he's waiting patiently. So Albert, do you wanna go ahead and ask your question? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Sure, thank you so much. Um, this has really been fantastic to watch. And I wanted to say, you know, Lisa, when you mentioned Mirror Mirror, when you brought that on up before, and you showed us that kind of the raw image versus the edited image, that was really powerful because a lot of times we don't get a chance to see how much work goes into that post-production process. But for you, how easy is it for you to figure out what you want to take out in post versus what you need to leave in there for the for the texture. So, I mean, I know you said it was kind of obvious that you wanted to get rid of that Glade plug-in, you know, some of the light switches and whatnot, but how, how often is it just like a very simple feeling for you to be able to decide this needs to stay in versus like, you know what, I want to draw the attention to this particular part of the photo. Albert, wonderful question. Um, good to see you, my friend. Uh, you know, I think I'm pretty instinctual and I think that's actually one of the great things about getting older um, is very much, I think we learn to trust our, our instincts more mm -hmm. than we did when we were younger. And so at this point, especially with like my work and, and art, I usually try to trust my instincts more than not. So when I look at an image, um, I can pretty much tell like, do I love this image? Is it a good image? Or is it maybe just okay? And this maybe shouldn't be part of the final um, collection. And same thing goes with when I'm post-processing. I, I make decisions pretty quickly on what I feel should stay and should go. But at the same time, I feel it's common with artists you really never finish. So like, I really ne have never finished one photo. I could pull up any of these photos for you with you right now and figure out something to edit out or some color to just change by like a 0.1 percentile or, you know, so trust my instincts. Um, and at some point I just, you know, you just have to be, the work has to be done and put it out there for people to hopefully enjoy. So thanks Albert. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Albert. Great question. Does anyone else have a question um, for Lisa or for Romy before we wrap up today's program? Okay, if anyone thinks of anything in the next minute or so, uh, raise your hand or speak up. Um, Lisa, Romy, do either of you have any um, closing remarks you want to give us? Oh, we do have one question. What's your what's your next project, or maybe an, another oh. current project you're working on? Oh, Monzo family. Hi, Nat and Sal. Love you guys and the cats. Um, I do actually have a project that is on my mind um, that I haven't started working on yet, but I will talk about it. 
this is a tentative title. Um, not sure if I will stick with it or not, but uh, I will. I will be working on it with my friend Wendy, who is also on this chat and has a wonderful eye and is a very thoughtful person. The project is titled, titled "A Sibling Once Removed," and what it is is I learned as I grew, as I've been growing older. I haven't been able, been able to stop yet. Does anyone know how to how to do that? Um, as I've grown older, I've just realized that when I would talk with friends about catching up with people about how, you know, how's everything going? How's your, I always ask about people's family. I'm always really interested, you know, how, how's your family doing? I noticed that a lot of uh, my close friends, they're, they're just, them and their siblings uh, have been drifting apart. And some of them there's, it's very rare I find to, yeah, to find friends that still have a real closeness with their siblings. Um, and I think if they do, that is, really something to hold on to and, and cherish. And so I have a project in mind where it, it would be about photographing two siblings that in a place that a place that either one of them wants to take another to has always wanted to like wanted to take you here or a place that's special to them. And hopefully having a conversation about, you know, what has separated you? Do you want to work on on um, work on uh rebuilding. rebuilding things together and that's why it's called a sibling once removed because it's just like a cousin once removed i'm hoping that mm -hmm. it will be maybe this project or life will help bring them back together so it's going to be a very i know it's going to be a very emotional um sensitive project mm -hmm. but i think it's um i'd love to use art to I hope that anyone sees the ballet project and, and finds something that resonates with them. But I'd love to also use art to directly help people, you know, because to me, people are the best part of life. Occasionally they're the worst, but they're mostly <laughs> the best. And I think it's, as again, the pandemic has shown us, we need each other in our lives, you know, for us to be, uh, for us to have happiness. And so when you have a direct biological connection with someone and you've many times you've grown up with them unless you've been separated for them too for you to drift apart it just breaks my heart and um you know I see that more and more when I as I've been growing older and been speaking with friends so you know I think that's an interesting project there's um a lot of depth and layers there and I also hope that it hopefully will be able to help some people uh rebuild like Romy said so art therapy art therapy there you go there you go <laughs> It sounds like an amazing project. We'll look, we'll look forward to that um, at some point in the future. We're just about at time. Um, so I want to thank Romy and Lisa again for joining us. Um, we have recorded today's session. So if anyone joined us late or just wants to revisit, um, you'll be able to find that on the Treehouse website. That's treehouse-shop.com. Um, it'll be posted to YouTube. We'll share the link there. Uh, you can also find our shop at Treehouse Hawaii on Instagram. Um, if you want to see more from Lisa, you can visit her website, lisakcho.com, uh, Lisa K. Cho on Instagram as well for social media. Um, and then if you're more interested in the ballet, um, hcballet.com for the Honolulu Classical Ballet and HC Ballet on Instagram. So if you want to keep up with this project, which I hope will continue into the future um, and see as it develops um, or more work from either one of, of these fabulous artists who are joining us this month. The work up is up in the shop. We have five of the images from um, the series printed and on display. They'll be hanging in our shop through August 4th. So come by anytime if you'd like to see them in person. Uh, shop hours are 10 to six, Monday to Saturday and 11 to five on Sunday. So we're open seven days a week for you there. Um, if you wanna catch them before they come down. Uh, Lisa or Romy, any last words before we uh, say a farewell to everyone today? Thank you so much for uh, having us on. Nice yeah, time. thank you so much. And thank you to everybody also who joined and let me nerd out on photography. I mean, <laughs> I do that to you guys normally in our personal lives, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thank you to everyone who joined us today as well. Um, some great questions, um, some great feedback in the chat. So uh, we look forward to seeing you next month at the next Treehouse Artist Conversation. Um, and thanks once again to Lisa and Romy. Okay. Have a great evening, Hello, everyone. everyone. <laughs>